What's up guys, it is Chris back with another news video and today we have interesting news from Gerard Perigo and the release or reissue of their 1970s Kezket. Before I get into it, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. So as I mentioned, Gerard Perigo back with a reissue of their 1976 Kezket. And like a few brands that I talk about on this channel pretty often, Eterna being one of them, I think that Gerard Perigo are somewhat underappreciated here in the United States. And there's a few reasons for that, very similar to the reasons that Eterna are underappreciated here in the United States as well. They're kind of unknown because they don't do a lot of marketing here. And also they don't have many authorized dealers. If you go to GP's website and actually look for an authorized dealer here in the United States, I think there are about 10 in the whole entire United States, which is not a lot. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, and that is a shame. They make and have made some really compelling watches over the years, and they have a very long history of watchmaking. One of those watches is the Casquette. Before we go on, I just wanted to mention watchshopping.com. Watchshopping.com have sponsored this video and they are a really great place to go for new and pre-owned watches. They carry dozens of the brands that we talk about here on this channel. They have them new and they have them used at great prices. They have brands such as Grand Seiko, Seiko, Tissot, Omega, Casio, they have G-Shocks. They really do carry a ton of different watches on their website. Definitely check them out at watchshopping.com. The Kezket was introduced in 1976 alongside two other watches that were actually pretty cool as well. Very similar to this, the Bulova Computron and of course the Amida Digitrend. These are really interesting looking watches. They're driver's watches and the Kezket was a driver's watch as well. Like I said, introduced in 1976, and it was not only revolutionary because of its innovative LED display, but because of its design. Like I mentioned, the Amida Digitrend and the Bull of a Computron, these were driver's watches. So they looked very different from a traditional watch. They were made so that a person who was driving would not need to take their eyes off the road to see the time. All they would have to do is look at their wrist and the display would actually be facing them if their hand was on a steering wheel. And it makes sense, it actually is functional and it makes the watch very interesting looking and I think futuristic looking and that's kind of the reason why I like it. This was a design that has always struck a chord with me because of its simple yet futuristic design. That's why I was very excited when GP announced they were reissuing the Kezket. They actually came out with a one-off version of this. It was made in carbon fiber. This is actually a limited edition. They came out with a limited edition of 820. Very weird number. We'll get back to why they use that number in just a few minutes. So this reissue of the Kezket is a sleek titanium and ceramic case, and it gets a ceramic bracelet as well. It's really very, very good looking. The limited edition Kazket 2.0 has a case made out of ceramic and titanium with a bracelet that integrates ceramic and rubber together. And the rubber is basically on the underside and then you get a titanium clasp. Movement on this is now the GP03980, which GP say will last for two years if you push the time display up to 20 times a day. Now I giggle a little bit because one of the biggest complaints about the original Kezket was that you had to replace the batteries very often. If you wanted to see the time, you have to press that button all the time to actually see the time. It wasted a lot of battery, so it actually didn't last very long, sometimes under a year, depending on how often you use it. Now, since this is sort of a collector's item, a novelty, it's a little bit different nowadays, I think, but they have said that they've improved that, and they're saying that you could use the watch up to 20 times a day, and you'll still get two years of battery life, which really isn't that bad. It's basically a very similar size. So they're making this somewhat of a true reissue. Size on the case is a wearable 34 millimeters by 
42.5 millimeters with a 14 millimeter thickness. It's actually a little bit above 14 millimeters thick. Since this is a rectangular watch, this wears larger than the 34 millimeters that it is actually wide. So it does definitely wear bigger than that, especially since it's kind of thick as well. Um, it's actually a very comfortable watch. I've actually tried these on a few times. The Amita Digitrend I have owned. I've owned the Bulova Computron. These are all very similar in design as well. You get 50 meters of water resistance and the watch is limited to 820 pieces as I mentioned and that is basically paying homage to the lifetime of the original casquette. So only 8,200 pieces were ever produced for that original casquette. So what they have done here is limited this to 820 pieces. Very interesting move there. So it's not a lot of watches that they're coming out with. However, I hope that they come out with more versions of this and they actually make it a little bit more affordable because the price on this is $4,700. Yes, that is a lot of money for a quartz watch. I know, but it's a cool quartz watch. It kind of reminds me, in my opinion, of my Ventura MGS. It's a really interesting watch that was really hard to make and this is very similar in that manner. This is a very bespoke watch. It's a very interesting looking watch. The Casquette is a futuristic looking watch that actually has influenced some modern watches and watchmakers from today. So if you are familiar with MBNF, MBNF obviously a huge, interesting, very complicated watchmaker of, of today. And they actually took inspiration from this watch, from the Casquette in their HM5 and the HMX. And then another brand that I would like to mention is Romain Jerome. Romain Jerome actually went out of business. They made some crazy watches, but two of the best watches, hands down, that they made through the time that they were actually in business was the Subcraft and the Spacecraft. These are two watches that are heavily inspired by the Casquette, the Amita Digitrend, these watches, and these are both mechanical watches costing in the tens and tens of thousands of dollars. I believe that the HM5 and the HMX cost over $50,000. The uh, Subcraft is, and the Spacecraft cost around $30,000. So these are basically four watches that are very, very expensive that take inspiration from the Casquette and the Amita Digitrend, which is obviously way more affordable when compared. Uh, pretty cool watches that they actually influence these are cool watches. This is a very good looking watch. It looks like something that you would find in Star Wars or something like that. It's very interesting looking. It's uh, It's got a really nice case design. I really like it. It's almost like a, uh, a futuristic piece of artwork for your wrist is how I would describe it, I guess. Um, and they really did update it to a point where I think it looks more modern, even though they didn't change it drastically from that original edition. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. A lot of the watches that I mentioned in this video are watches that I really want to own in my collection one day. I've owned Amita Digitrends. I actually sold it because prices on them have skyrocketed uh, and I do regret doing that. I plan on buying a Bull of a Computron again. Uh, I've owned that in the past. I do want to own a Romain Jerome. I want to own a Subcraft or a Spacecraft. I've actually brought this up on the channel a few times. They are bargains because they are made by some of the best watchmakers. Uh, that money can get and they actually hired them to make these two watches uh, because they wanted to make something pretty incredible and they did. Uh, the name Romain Jerome, maybe not uh, the most respected name in the watch industry, these two watches are amazing. Uh, and they don't sell for a lot of money because of that name. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, I find this stuff very interesting. I really find this watch uh, compelling. I I've always really liked this watch. Uh, it's just expensive on the secondary market for used ones. This one is really expensive because obviously it's a reissue. Uh, only 8,200 were originally made, so there's not a lot out there, and a lot of them are broken. So uh, I would imagine very few still remain out there. If you look on eBay, very few pop up. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.